Hey guys, it's Andrew with another Love Tech video. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the best email client that you can get for your Mac and also your iPhone and iPad. The email market is heavily saturated with a lot of different email clients saying that, oh, they can do feature X or feature Y, but what if you just want an email app that plainly works and also, on top of that, has a lot of really cool features? Stay tuned to find out why I think Spark is the best email client out there and why I have given it an a rating. So before we get into the email client itself and looking at the different features that it has and how it stacks up to other email clients on the market, I wanna first take you on a little bit of an adventure and show you what email apps I've been using over the years and why I decided to get away from them and mainly using Spark now. So I wanna first start out with my email timeline. Way back in the day, this is way back of when I first got my first iMac, back in 2008, I started out using Apple Mail. Now, don't get me wrong, Apple makes great products, but sometimes I find their software is a little bit iffy at best. So. Why did I get away from mail after 2010, you might ask? So moving along on my email timeline, I moved over to Mail Thunderbird and something called Sparrow back in the day. The reason for that being is I started college in 2010 and I needed three different email apps to kind of keep my worlds separate. I had a business email, I had a personal email, and I also had a school email. So I, I, I'm, I'm very much that way where I feel like a lot of the time I want to separate out my worlds to kind of just keep an app dedicated for a specific email address. That was at least the old me until I found Spark and I'll get that to that a little bit later on in the video here. Moving along on my timeline into the year of 2014, once I graduated from college, I found that I didn't need my business email anymore because I dissolved my business. And then also, obviously, I didn't need my school email address anymore. So I switched all my email back to my daily driver using Apple's mail client. However, towards the later half of 2016, I really started to struggle. And that's because mail obscurely kept deleting my emails that I wasn't telling it to delete. Now, I did some research on this and actually found out there is a bug in the mail app that Apple still is not fixed to this day, believe it or not. I don't know why the heck they have not fixed this bug. So let me tell you a little bit about the bug. So the bug on Apple's mail client, what it does is say if I delete um, I have two emails in my inbox, for instance. I have email A and I have email B. What will happen is if I wanna delete email A, it will actually delete email B instead of email A. Sometimes it gets confused with the server copies versus your local copies, and I found this to be a real huge inconvenience. So that's why I stopped using mail in 2016. So once I discovered this bug in Apple's mail program, I decided I needed a change. So I switched over to the dark side. Yes, I switched over to Outlook in 2016. Now Outlook was all fine and dandy until recently and I found another bug in yet another email application. The bug being is that all of my folders somehow disappeared and I could not get them back. Now they weren't gone off the server, they were just gone off my local copy of Outlook for some reason on my machine. I tried everything. I tried resetting Outlook, I tried reinstalling Outlook, I tried reaching out to Microsoft, they could not give me any answer as to why my folders had suddenly mysteriously disappeared. So, very frustrated, Andrew here, decided, okay, I'm gonna give Apple the benefit of the doubt. Here it is, 2019, three years later since I moved off of Apple's mail client, maybe I can move back to it. Maybe, maybe Apple has fixed the issue with me deleting an email and it deletes another one instead. So, in 2019, I switched back to Apple's mail client and I was doing okay for a little while on that. And then guess what happened? Yeah, one day I went in and deleted something and instead deleted a different email. Oh my gosh. So I, at this point in time, I had had it up to here. Here I was, you know, six, seven years into using Apple's mail 
client and for some reason it is deleting the wrong emails still. I'm still curious as to why it does this, why they have not fixed this and it is super annoying. If any of you guys know as to why Apple's mail client does this, leave your comments down below. I'd love to hear from you and let me know why the heck this happens all the time. At least for me it does. I don't know why, but leave your comments down below on that. So very frustrated Andrew here, didn't want to use Apple Mail anymore and also didn't want to go back to an archaic program that doesn't receive regular updates such as Thunderbird. I didn't want to obviously go back to Outlook because I couldn't fix the folder issue. And then of course, Sparrow is a email app that actually was deprecated by Google a few years ago, believe it or not. So I was kind of out of options. And then I was like, well, you know, Let's hit Google itself and let's take a look at what options are out there for the Mac and not only the Mac, but also a native app for your iPhone, your iPad and other devices. That's when I ran across Spark. Now Spark is a great email client and I cannot recommend it more than like, I, I'm just blown away by the feature set it has and also the reliability it has. It is something that has absolutely changed how I do email and how, how I feel doing email in general. Like it makes my email process so much easier and it is so nice to have the same UI across all three of my devices. It's just seamlessly works and I can't love it enough. So now the moment you've all been waiting for, let's take a look at the feature list on Spark and why I chose it over all these other email apps, including a email app called Canary that is also made for the Mac. Looking at the comparison table here, I put this comparison table together based upon features that I thought were important or things that really differentiated Spark in its own kind of category and didn't blew the competition out of the water. No other email app comes close to having the feature set that Spark does, and they're continually updating it and adding new features all the time. Let's talk first about the cost of these applications. So starting out with Apple Mail, yeah, it's a free application. It works great for basic email. If you want additional feature sets or are super frustrated like myself, when it comes to having your email deleted that you didn't tell the email client to delete, yeah, be my guest, go with Apple Mail. <laughs> it is free, however, so pro there. Outlook, yeah, costs $140 for Outlook. Just don't go down that route. Stay away from Microsoft. <laughs> um, Thunderbird is a great alternative. However, we'll get to some of the features down below in a minute. It lacks a lot of features. It is a very, uh, in my mind, basic email client. It's from Mozilla, if you're not familiar with Thunderbird. I wouldn't say it's a bad email application, but it definitely doesn't have a lot of features that I was looking for. Moving on to the next email app, it's called Canary. Now, Canary is a really good competitor to Spark. However, it does fall short in a few key areas, one of those being price. It does cost $20 for the app, and it costs additional money if you want to buy the iOS or iPad OS versions. Moving on to Spark, it is free. Now, you guys might be wondering, what is the asterisk after the word free? So let me talk about that really quick. It is free if you personally want to use it or if you want to do something called collaboration with a few people. However, in my case, I'm not really collaborating on email. We'll get into talking about email collaboration in a minute, which is a really cool tool that Spark does have. However, for my case, having a free email application with all these features definitely won me over in the price category. Now let's move on to some of the features of Spark. First off is Quick Reply. Now Quick Reply basically is a like a text sort of, you can set up predefined short messages that you can click one button basically and it sends a reply to a person. That's why I say it's like a text message sort of in a way or kind of like a shortcut to sending a reply to somebody on a email. Now I think this is a super useful feature in our day and age when we're constantly in a hurry if we want to approve something or say no to something or say, you know, call me. It's an easy, quick way to be able to respond back to an email. The next feature I want to talk about is co-authoring. In our day and age now, we are continuously co-authoring things together. When it comes to PowerPoints, Excel, Word documents, but one thing that Spark stands out amongst all the other competition is co-authoring. Now, this is a feature that, believe it or not, Microsoft doesn't even have for Outlook. So 
is a really cool feature and co-authoring is free for two users. If you go above two users, it does cost money and that's why there is the asterisk next to the word free up above. Next are dynamic templates. Now, dynamic templates do not come with Mail, Outlook, or Thunderbird. They do, however, come with Canary. However, again, Canary does cost $20 plus the additional cost for iOS and iPadOS apps. Dynamic templates is a free feature inside of Spark. It is a really cool feature in my mind because you can set up, say, templates for a customer or default replies. So you can say, for example, dear, and then have a field customer name. You can easily fill stuff out that way. And you're able to send dynamic templated emails to your customers or people in mass quantities. So it's a really nice feature. And a lot of the other email apps, again, don't have this. The next thing I want to talk about is syncing settings across devices. Now, Spark is a super easy email client to set up. So if you're saying to setting it up on your Mac and want it also on your iPhone like myself, it's really easy to set up. Since it is linked to your iTunes account, basically all you have to do, download the app. Once it's installed on, say, your iPhone, say if you already had it installed on your Mac and you wanted to install Spark on your iPhone. All you have to do is download the app from the App Store again, and since you've already set up a Spark profile tied into your email, it brings and synchronizes all of your email, all of your settings, and all your customizations that were done to the email app itself over to all of your other devices. So it's a seamless setup across all of your devices. It makes setting up your email seamless and effortless on devices once you get your first device set up. Again, I think this is a great feature because in our day and age now, we're in a constant hurry to get stuff done and we want things to work when we press a button. So that's basically what this does. None of these e other email apps for that matter do this. Next is dark mode. Now, a lot of these other email apps will have dark wraps around them, like if you're using dark mode on your Mac, for instance. However, Spark and Canary are the only two email apps that actually have a true native dark mode. So this means basically the user interface is completely custom designed, a dark theme and a light theme. It's really nice if you're wanting to change the theme on it and you're wanting to say have dark mode on at night or if you want to change it to light mode in the day or if you're like me, a dark mode user all the time, it's really nice to be able to have your email not just this blaring white blank screen on your page. Instead, it's a lot easier to be able to read content off of that way. Next is delay send. Now this is a really cool feature and it's pretty simple, but believe it or not, Mail, Outlook, and Thunderbird, and Canary do not have delay send. Delay send basically means you can schedule emails to send at a different time. You can delay sending those emails and schedule them to send at a later date. One important note I should make here is Outlook does have this feature in newer versions and it does have it for the Windows operating system. However, I don't believe it does have it for Mac yet. So definitely go check that out. If anyone does know if Outlook does have it, leave your comments down below on that. I'd like to hear those. Next is a smart focused inbox. Now, smart focused inboxes aren't anything new. Gmail and Google did it years ago. However, Outlook has tried and failed Spark, however, really does a good job at this. It really helps organize your email very well and having smart focused inboxes help you be able to see your flag messages easily, be able to see your, all your unread email easily and be able to sort things out much easier than having to filter through and look at a lot of other email. Now, Mail doesn't really have this feature yet. Thunderbird doesn't have it. Canary, it, it does have it, but it's not quite as good in my mind as Spark and again, you are paying for Canary versus Spark, which is free. The last feature I wanna to touch base on is third-party integration. Now, what does this mean exactly? So basically, third-party integration means that additional app developers can basically create plugins for the email client. If you look at the chart in front of you, Thunderbird actually is the only other app that allows third-party plugins to it. And again, that's probably because it's Mozilla and it's open source. Spark also allows this and they're adding new third-party vendor support all the time. So this is a really cool feature because you can tie in apps such as Apple Reminders, OmniFocus, Things, To-Do List, OneNote, Evernote, and a bunch more. 
Spark is constantly adding additional third-party services and definitely won me over in that category too because I'm able to be able to have integration in my email client from other different types of productivity apps. Now we've gone through all the features and all of the different things in Spark that set it apart from the competition. Let's talk about platform compatibility amongst all these email applications. First, starting out with the Mac. Mail, Outlook, Thunderbird, Canary, and Spark are all compatible with the Mac. Great, right? Yeah, that's awesome, huh? But let's start looking at other lines here. Next, moving on to it, obviously Mail is not compatible with Windows because it is a native Apple app. Outlook, Thunderbird are native apps for Windows and Spark is currently in development. If you go out to their website, they say that the Windows app is coming soon and they are in development on it right now. Canary also is a Mac only exclusive app, so you cannot get it on a Windows machine. Moving on to iOS and iPadOS support, Mail and Outlook both have full compatibility along with Canary and Spark. Thunderbird does not have a native iOS or iPad OS app. I find this very interesting considering they do have native apps for Firefox. Why Mozilla has never developed a Thunderbird app, I'm not exactly sure. Leave your comments down below if you know why. Moving on to Android compatibility, Mail obviously does not have support because it is an Apple native app. Outlook, Canary, and Spark all have apps on Android. However, again, Thunderbird falls short here and does not have a native app. Finally, moving on to the Apple Watch, the Apple Watch does in fact have Mail, Outlook, Canary, and Spark native apps on your Apple Watch. So good news there. So summing up the table here, Spark is the clear winner because it has the most features, it is a free application, and it has full native app compatibility across all the major platforms, asterisk, Windows support, Windows native app coming soon. In my mind, it's a no brainer to switch to it because again, even if you don't like it, even if you don't agree with me here, it's a free application. Give it a try, go out to the Mac app store today, download it if you're an Android user, give it a try. If you're a Windows user, wait another few months and it will be out available and you'll be able to test it out on all your different devices. And guys, since you stuck around for the end of the video, I wanted to touch base on a little bit of a change here at Love Tech. As you will notice, some of our graphics have changed, including the intro. I wanted to make a new intro for a long time because the first intro I made originally for Love Tech was just kind of thrown together because I didn't know how well the channel would do. So I really wanted to put a lot more effort into my new intro and some of my graphics. So I really hope you guys enjoyed that here on the channel. I'm looking forward to making additional improvements in the near future. And guys, if you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you hit the subscribe button at the top and click the bell for notifications, and we'll see you next time in another Love Tech video.